Everything's great. All right, here we go. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Uh, what show am I doing? Dr. Homebrew. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Dr. Homebrew. Here's uh, up. Yeah, every time I get in front of the stupid thing, I just I I freeze for seconds. I'm like, what show? Well, I don't. I honestly don't know. It could be ears up. It could be Doctor Homebrew. Um, that could just be talking to nobody. Another uh, lunch meet re- <laughs> revival. Sure, <laughs> that sounds that sounds awful. Talking about it sounds people. fantastic. Yeah, no, that show, no. Um, but we are here, everybody. We have a full show. Apparently, Brian Cooper wanted to show off, or he's trying to get a raise or something, um, because he. We have three beers on each show. We have six people on this show. We have six beers in general. But here's the catch: they're all from the same homebrew club. We have the what? Empire Brewers, and we're going to be running through one of the. Simple slash hard styles to make, I think. California Common. Correct me if I'm wrong. California Common, I think, Cooper, is it's one of those where like it's really easy to fuck it up. It's, it's really easy to get it wrong. It, it, it is, yeah. So we're talking about that. And today we have Jason and Doug from Inland Empire Brewers. Welcome to the show, boys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. Um Thank you for sticking with us. We had some uh, scheduling conflicts on my, well, not scheduling conflicts. I, uh, my internet crashed <laughs> last time. Oh, we no. do this, I think, was it, was that this show or was it another show, Brian? I forget. I was, I think that was another show. Getting to it, it. It cascaded into yeah. this and then we just, yeah. This we was scheduling. I crashed last show. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, I almost booked, I almost booked a, a vacation for tonight. Like we were going to leave. It's Alice's last day of school. And we're like, oh, it's like the Monterey Bay Aquarium and whatever. And I, booked it, and then like, I got all my confirmation emails from like the hotel, the tickets. And then I go, oh shit, I have Dr. Homer. <laughs> oh, I think it was a text from you, Cooper. Like, okay, here's the schedule. I'm like, oh no, uh, that to change it all. But I thought for a second, you know what, what if I just cancel? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to the boys. They send a ton of beer. So we are, uh, we're here talking about it. So this beer, Doug, what is this beer for? Clue me in on this a little bit, please. Um, so the uh, CHA, every year they do something they call bragging rights at the uh, California Festival um, that they do every year. And all the local clubs brew the same beer and then do uh, competitions. So in our club, we do our own internal bragging rights. Um, we brew the, brew the same beer and then we get together and we have the entire club judge which beer we think represents the best of style that's going to represent us. And so we had just done that. And um, and I was uh, talking with Brian Cooper about um, possibly coming on the show uh, for some other communications that we had. And I thought, hey, you know what? What if we made it bigger? Uh, so you can blame me, Jason, for this. What if we made it bigger? <laughs> and and we actually uh, brought on multiple people for the club because this is our 40th year wow. as a club. Um, we're one mm. of the very few clubs that have been continuously present for 40 years. Um, and so it's a big, de- big deal for us. We thought, well, this might be a nice way to celebrate. And that's how we got here. Yeah, I think that's great. Congratulations. W- what's the uh, uh, what's the oldest? Is it the Maltos Falcons? Is it those nerds? That's what I that's that's, that's what they keep telling me. OK, yeah. <laughs> is there yeah. is, is there a conflict between who's who's older? No, no, they're definitely okay. older than we are. OK, all right. I, I, was really I, don't, I don't know. I don't know um, my history well enough to know. I trust that when they say they're the oldest, they wouldn't lie. Well, I mean, what are they, what, how are you going to prove it? You know, it's like, oh, I'm the, we're the best of the, you know, what a company of the thing or whatever. It's like, well, how do you, uh, how do you quantify that? I was what's really nice. What's nice in Southern California, all the clubs basically have uh, relations with each other. And we have, you know, nice. we, we're always trying to win over the other, the other guys. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all brewers. And right. We'll hang out at the SoCal Brewers Fest and all of that. Right. I, I was really hoping there was going to be some kind of like Cascadian dark ale slash black IPA wars <laughs> between the two clubs, like who's older. Um, so maybe we can make that happen for the next show. Okay. JP, we're going to have to cut back on the, the BSing just a little bit to fit all Whoa. these beers in. So, what? all right, let's do that. Uh, let's get on with it now. <laughs> okay. I want to drink some beer. The first beer that we have uh, with the labels attached with a hair tie. So my girl will appreciate that. My daughter. Thank you very much. Uh, this is from Jason. Welcome, Jason. Thank you for having us once again. 
Of course. Um, California Common, is it a familiar style to you or not? Like, have you brewed it before? Or are you familiar with making it? Or were you like, what the hell is everybody doing? No, nah, this is the first time brewing it. And it was just one of those ones. Looked online, found the, basically a clone recipe and ran with it. So A clone of what? Uh, the Anchor Scene. Okay, cool. I heard so. they got bought. Or not bought. They got bought. They uh, the, the CEO of Chobani, the yogurt company bought anchor steam and they're uh, he's going to revive it that's what i heard he's going to keep it yeah. close to the original as it was which is yeah. exciting which <laughs> I bet everybody that's working there is going yeah we need a retrofit dude <laughs> this is, you know, <laughs> that that place is hard for the amount of beer that they're pumping out of that place uh sorry taskmasters uh gonna, gonna get mad at me okay well let's open this beer then um and jason you're the current uh, club president too right no i'm not i mean the other the other other jason yeah mr. Okay. yeah mr d Yep, I have been the club president probably going about, this is my sixth term, so. Okay. Yeah, doing, where Inland Empire Brewers is actually a close-knit community where everyone and anyone can feel safe. We welcome any, you know, levels of brewers. We're always constantly trying to educate and challenge members to brew and brew better. Nice, but no women allowed, right? That's what uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'd be uncomfortable with that. Is that true? I'm just kidding. Uh, no, they they are definitely allowed. Course, As you can see, my wife's the one that actually uh, packaged up my beers. That's why we got the hair clips on there. Nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I love you know, just like the 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 movement. I guess I would say in the late teens, early aughts, was to like, you know, the movement to get women brewers in, which is really important for diversity. And it's like. The sort of joke was all what are all the men gonna do? They're all scared. They're gonna stand in the corner and like look and like look like what that's what is going on? Who is that person? Anyway, I'm flat. But it's it's not just a good idea from a diversity standpoint, it's a great idea at a time when home brewing is in a little bit of a declining period and club attendance is down. Like, why restrict yourself? Yeah, you know, why not have more people broaden the pool of folks who are gonna come in and help keep your club alive? It's it's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. No, exactly. All right. Um, Char, you haven't said anything oh. except that whole thing. Um, why don't you start us off with Jason's beer? He's a California Common. All right. Well, there's nothing common about this, Jason. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Let me get the dad jokes uh, out of the way <laughs> quick. Uh, and are, are you in a homebrew club? <laughs> Um, yeah, yes, I am in a homebrew club. <laughs> <laughs> if, pe if people would like to find out more about your homebrew club in your area in the Inland Empire, where would they go? Is you, you have a website or something that they could uh, go, go to? Yes, the website is iebrewers.org. You can also find us on uh, Facebook as Inland Empire Brewers, Instagram, uh, basically all the social media platforms. But yeah, definitely check out our website, iebrewers.org. Excellent. Uh, and there's a lot of people in the Inland Empire, so all of you folks down there listening, go go check that out. So, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool to have a chance to do, do like six California Commons for for two shows, uh, and just kind of get some of the subtle differences between them. I think they're all really good, uh, and I think that you know yours is also uh, really good. Uh, bottle inspection, it's a bottle, medium fill, low hiss on opening. Doesn't matter for scoring, but it's always good to get some feedback about your your packaging. Uh, aroma, uh, in a low malt aroma of light toasty malt, uh, no hop aroma, no esters, no off aromas. You know, I did try to let this, I, I judged this one last night. I have a, a fresh one here in front of me. I did try to let it sit for a while before I started the judge, but it, as often happens with aroma, I think it's probably wasn't quite warm enough to get all the aroma I needed to. And, and this sample, it looks fantastic. But it's also one that I pulled out of the fridge probably about 15 minutes ago. So I unfortunately, it's not helping me get more aroma. I, I gave you the benefit of the doubt with that eight because, you know, it's not your fault that I, I couldn't plan ahead and pull it out of the fridge an hour before I did. Uh, appearance, medium amber in color. Uh, it's almost crystal clear, uh, low persistent head. Uh, it's got very small white ivory bubbles, you know, very fine bubbles that last for a long time. So three out of three. Uh, initially the flavor is malt focused, uh, kind of a medium, low toasty malt bitterness is medium low. Uh, and I'd say by mid palate, it's the balance is toward the malt. Uh, it's well attenuated, no off flavors. Uh, I finished kind of moderate length, sort of a moderate length malt oriented finish, 
uh, more toasty than caramel, which is fine. The description uh, of stall description for this beer talks about uh, toasty and caramel malt. Uh, doesn't have to be both. It could be either one. And I think yours is more on the toasty side, which I enjoy. Overall, that was a 13 out of, of 20 for flavor. Uh, body, uh, medium body. Carbonation is medium low. Uh, no warming. It's it's neither creamy nor astringent, but on that spectrum, it's it's more toward the creamy side. So uh, I, I gave this four out of five because I really wanted more carbonation out of this beer. And we've talked at length about this sh about carbonation on this show. I won't belabor the point, but you know, it, it's it's one one point uh, for me. It's it's devilishly hard to get the carbonation right. And I, I think the fact that in every other aspect, this beer was 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 pretty good. Uh, you know, every, everyone is kind of, you know, everyone has the same problems with carbonation. So I, I think that it didn't really affect you guys relative to each other. And it's not just to your your club. It's it's me. It's it's Coop. It's JP. You know, we all have a hard time getting things carbonated right for packaging. Uh, overall impression seven for a total score of thirty five, which is in the high end of very good. Uh, it's a tasty and flavorful beer. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, no off flavors, no off aroma. Uh, I think the malt bill uh, or extract bill, or whatever you did, is is excellent. The recipe formulation is excellent. Uh, hop. I, I the 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 flaw here, I think, is that the which isn't really a flaw. It's maybe more of a recipe issue. Is overall, I think hop aroma, hop flavor, uh, and hop bitterness are lacking. And the aroma and the flavor I might just dismiss as an artifact of the beer being cold when I, I or somewhat cold when I poured it to judge, but that's not going to affect the bitterness as much. And to me, this this is a beer that, you know, the, the guidelines talk about a, uh, a low to moderately high hop flavor uh, and pronounced hop bitterness. And this is an excellent beer, and I really enjoyed it a lot. And just from a, a, a sensory standpoint of, would I finish this? Did, did I finish this? Well, I, there were six. I wasn't going to finish the whole thing and then go to bed at 1230. Uh, but would I have wanted to finish it? Uh, I, I did. It, it's more of a recipe issue of, I, I think, overall, more hops in every aspect of the aroma, flavor, bitterness would have really helped this beer out. It would have pushed you, probably would have pushed you over 40. Well, no, probably. I think it was, would have been over 40 if you had done that. So I'd say bump up your hop bill, maybe 30%, 25% next time, and just see what happens. So again, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, I think you'll, when you rebrew this, and I, I hope you do, uh, maybe send us some more and let it, we can we can uh, judge it on air. So thank you so much. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right, Coop. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll go through. Um, I agree with uh, some of what Brian said there, but uh yeah, I'd opened, uh, the beer had a nice hiss uh, when I opened it and uh, uh, good bottle fill as well. I agree there, but uh, yeah, on the aroma, I got a pleasant, um, I feel like I got an herbal hop uh, character out of it myself, kind of a medium level in the nose. I didn't feel like the hop. Coop, you're muted. All right. We're trained professionals, hey. Jason. Don't worry. Okay. So, yeah, when I opened the beer, I got a nice hiss. Uh, it was appropriately filled. And um, in the aroma, I found actually a pleasant uh, medium herbal hop. I didn't think the hop was completely absent myself. Um, but uh, it does combine with a pretty rich uh, dark bread and toasty edge from the malt. Uh no DMS or diacetyl. Uh, some caramel notes come in more as it warms. Yeah, there were some low esters appropriate uh, for this style. Um, and the appearance was really uh, pretty. Medium amber, orangey highlights and a whitish head. Uh, fine bubbles. It persisted fairly well. Um, very clear beer. Great for the style. So three out of three for appearance. Um, in the flavor, I got it pretty rich maltiness again um comes through at the dark bread like and a toasty note alongside a little bit of caramel uh all kind of combining nicely i thought um the balance was fairly even to me uh bitterness is 
medium, medium low, maybe a little bit lower than you might want, but not too bad. Uh, it is pretty smoothly hopped with a light woody herbal note to it uh, and touch floral, uh, you know, reasonably low hops, but they're there to balance uh, the malt that's there. Um, so yeah, I guess it does lean a little bit towards the malt uh, instead of being even. I'll take that little bit back, but uh, clean low temp ale ferment is apparent. Uh, rich malts and hops linger in the aftertaste. It finishes semi-dry. Uh, I'm in the mouthfeel. The beer is, it's really smooth overall. That's one of the things I really liked about this one. It just has a clean drinkability, very little bite. Um, the beer is medium bodied with medium carbonation, maybe a little touch lower than that. I could agree with Brian there. Uh, no warmth, uh, creaminess or astringency. But it's it's fairly real real smooth and thirst quenching, nice to nice to quaff. So um, overall, I found it to be a quite enjoyable take on the Cal Common style, uh, with eminent smoothness. And uh, you know the bitterness could come up a touch to to meet the style a bit better. Just uh, don't don't overdo it too much and ruin the the smooth drinkability that is here. Um, I, I guess you know there's something in it. To me, I was struggling a little bit because I. Sometimes I get something uh, from a malt element as a little bit like a butterscotchy thing, but I realize it's just the caramel that's that is here. That light caramel comes across as almost a little butterscotchy. Uh, but again, it was mo mostly toast, so I don't know that you need to back that off a touch, but you, you could try that. And I'm, you know, I'm a little higher than Brian here. I. I I went to half points here. I just, I, I landed at a 39.5. I just thought it was really smooth and drinkable. Ooh. And I personally. There was no gold awarded in this category. Personally <laughs> liked, <laughs> liked the beer a lot. And uh, I just thought a few, with a few improvements, you could definitely push it up into that, that 40s territory without, without much trouble at all. Just a touch more bitterness and um, possibly a little bit more hop as Brian said. So I could agree there, but you know, I think, maybe instead of adjusting our scores on the fly, we just average all our scores that we've given to these beers and see where they land to determine the, the best beer. So I think it's a good idea. Um, yeah. So that's where I fell on that one. And, and thanks for sharing it. Um, yeah. I kind of agree with everybody. Uh, it's, it is hard. I think uh, Char was saying this because it's warm. I mean, it's hot here. It, it's like 90, what is it? 98 right now. Yeah, pretty much. And, you know, you take the beer out of the fridge and it's instantly just hot. So, you know, you, you got to kind of do all you can. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's good. I would probably go 38, 39 as well. Um, I think it is a touch on the caramel side, but it's not overly aggressive. It's almost kind of like a borderline amber, I guess. But maybe that's the style, too. I don't know. I think yeah, a little a little less caramel would be. Uh, It'd be great, but uh, that's beside the point because I don't really know what I'm talking about. Jason, why don't you, do you have any questions for these guys about not, what you said? You want to challenge not, You want to push back a little bit? No, I actually agreed with the hop comments. Um, I agreed it need a little bit more bitterness, just touch and a little bit more in aroma. Yeah. So the carbonation, yeah, there was some issues with it. Um, but yeah, no, I appreciate the feedback, guys. Thank you very much. What hops did you use in it? Uh, this one I actually used uh, Northern Brewer. Okay. So I I did a first ward edition uh, at, you know, right away it was uh, about one ounce. Um, so about 32 IBUs. And then I added uh, a 15 uh, at the 20 minute, I added about 0.6 ounce. And then at flame out, I added in there ounce. So. Works pretty, what was pretty your well. batch size? Uh, the batch size on this was a uh, six gallon. Okay. So. And do you remember the alpha acids on your Northern Brewer? Yeah, it was 8.3 or oh, okay. actually 8.6. Wow. So. Good. Okay. And do you want to briefly mention the malt bill too? And then yeah. I'm wondering if they're all the same, same beer or everybody had their own <laughs> recipe. Yeah. Mine was very basic. It's uh, about 85.9% uh, classic pills. So then 9.4 uh, Viking caramel 100. And then I did 4.7% uh, special roast malt. Oh, so. special roast. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. And as far as yeast, I used uh, White Labs WP810, the San Francisco Lager. 
fermented it at uh, 59 degrees, if I remember correctly. That's a good so. place to be. Yeah. The San Francisco treat. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, cool. cool. If that's it, you're done, Jason. You're Next. Done. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We uh, are going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to get somebody else in here. I have no idea who. And uh, we'll drink some more California comments. So hang on. It's Dr. Holbrew. We'll be right back. Robert, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going, fellas? Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Perfect. Can Can you hear me? We got you. We got everybody. Okay. Well, right. nice. let's, let's come back. Let's we're cranking. Let's do it. Here we go. Technology's working. <laughs> yeah, for once, man. For once. Okay, better have better do our show while it continues. All right. Welcome back, everybody. It's Dr. Homebrew, and we are back here with Robert, also from the Inland Empire Brewers. I mean, maybe I'm stepping on Brian Shar's question. Uh Robert, <laughs> welcome, dude. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And we got you a can. We you you canned your beer for us. Yeah, definitely. So I appreciate that. It's getting and, more and more common. Yeah, well, in California, because <laughs> it's a style of beer. Um, mm -hmm. That's cool, hey, man. Hey, you, man, you, I thought you, I had the dad joke monopoly on this man, show. Look, man, <laughs> you might. I have the stupid jokes. Uh, do you can beer for everybody? Is that like your go-to thing, or do you just show off? Sometimes? No, I can, I can pretty much everything, um, competition-wise, even sending, sending things out to competition, as long as it's not our own basically you know <laughs> okay. are you the only one that like cans everyone's like oh this is robert's beer yeah I, I made that mistake last year kind of thing so now i'm like i, I don't need anyone knowing it's my beers this year going forward so everyone's getting glass this year okay all nice. right i feel like it's a pain in the ass though you know you're, yeah. sort, of, you're, you're sort of have your setup for canning and then you're like oh no i gotta i gotta go caveman <laughs> yeah it's a little step backwards but it's all right yeah. you know <laughs> you've been brewing for a while or a good number I'm, of years I'm a, uh, a few years i'd say like about you know i tried it probably like close to a decade ago fell off and then kind of covid time yeah. is when everything ramped back up i think like most people right everybody's yeah. looking for a hobby you know yeah. brewers are shut down and everything is like oh, why, why don't i get back into this yeah beer making and bread making yeah. That's like the big, mm. the big uh, things. So, um, right, so let's let's uh, let's jump into the beer then. Cooper, go ahead. Okie dokie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, it was in a can, so there's no bottle inspection here, but uh, it was appropriate. Uh, silver, it cracked just fine, and there was a little hiss. <clears throat> um, so in the nose, this beer has a, a nice maltiness up front. Um, I feel like I got an interesting little kind of orangey apricot like fruitiness the joining that the malt up as it warms uh the malt is mostly kind of a dark bread thing um and the fruitiness that comes in is it's light and, and mostly okay you can have some fruitiness in these beers obviously but it kind of twisted in a little bit of an interesting way for me and sometimes different yeasts will kick out um di different esters that make it you know that make it go a certain way or not or another but uh, I'd be interested to know once we get to the recipe what uh, what yeast was used. Um, no DMS or diacetyl. Uh, seems cleanly fermented. Um, uh, the low hops, fairly faint, or kind of an herbal note in there. Uh, I would say maybe not quite enough to style. Uh, but still, it's pretty in the, in the right territory. I gave it an 8 out of 12 for aroma. Appearance wise, it's really pretty, um, has a nicely uh, formed head, medium, uh, medium size, uh, creamy with fine white bubbles, a rich amber color with the burnished deep orange highlights and the beer is very clear. So it looks right. Um, three out of three. In the flavor, I'm getting a light toasty malt in the flavor here. Comes in alongside uh, this a kind of a sweet fruity character like apple apricot combined a little bit um at kind of a medium low level the hops are fairly low again here floral with a hint of herbal um the bitterness is medium clean medium low temp ale ferment uh maybe a little higher than medium low temp or or an interesting yeast that's that's kicking out a little more ferment character uh but it is clean. I'm not getting any issues, no buttery or solventy or, uh, and no alcohol, uh, is poking out, uh, in a weird way and anything else. It's, it's kind of in the right territory. Uh, 
I let it at a, a 12 out of 20 on the flavor for this one. Um, mouthfeel wise, it's medium bodied with a nice uh, prickly, medium high carbonation. No warmth or astringency uh, or really a creamy quality. Um, but the beer is fairly satisfying and filling. It's not, uh, not too light bodied. Uh, yeah, overall, it's a nice drinking Cal Common. Uh, oh, three out of five for mouthfeel. A uh, nice drinking Cal Common with a lot going for it. The, the fruitiness just seems a touch high for me for the style, but uh, it's really not throwing it too far out of whack. It's easy to drink and quite enjoyable as it is, um, but plays more as like a straight ale rather than a hybrid to me. Um, so either, I don't know where you fermented it. it I can't guess or imagine to... Uh, be there when you did it but uh it was a you know if you did it at a slightly higher temp maybe reduce it a bit um and also pitch plenty of healthy yeast to keep it more style um i'm not getting any sulfur you know sometimes a, a, a german yeast or something else besides the california um lager yeast will, will uh will kick up some sulfur but it's not it's not sulfur it's just that fruitiness that's there and uh but yeah, overall, good use of ingredients, et cetera. The malt is really nice. Um, seven out of 10 overall, and I landed at a 33. Um, it's in the very good uh, uh, territory. But um, yeah, a little a little work on it. You could definitely get it up into the higher 30s or, or above. And um, it's very enjoyable as it is. So yeah, thanks for sharing it. Very good. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Shaw. Oh, pillow. So, so Robert, are you in a, never mind. I'm not going to do that for every one of you guys. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed this. I echo a lot of what, what Cooper said, uh, you know, bottle inspection, uh, NA, it's not a bottle, it's a can. Uh, and I'll say kind of at the outset, you managed to keep, I don't know when you canned this, but one of the problems with homebrew canning is oxidation. And this, there's no oxidation in this at all that I could perceive. That's uh, true. I know, Cooper, did you get any? No, none at all. No. Yeah, and it's, I mean, my understanding is you essentially have to fill the can and then put the lid on and, you know, the lid gets kind of crimped down uh, onto the onto the can, which can you know, give a big opportunity for oxygen to get in compared to a narrow neck on a bottle. But your process for packaging, that, that was great from the oxidation standpoint, didn't get any at all. Uh, aroma, you know, I, as with the previous uh, entrant, I, I judge this colder than I should. Uh, having said that, the aroma overall was low. You know, this doesn't have to be a leap out of your glass into your nose type of beer. Uh, it really isn't. But yeah, kind of a low aroma, low malt, uh, kind of a toasty malt. Definitely got low woody hops. I'm assuming Northern Brewer because that's the sort of the standard. But that they have that kind of woody, sometimes minty character. Yours wasn't minty, but woody is kind of the typical descriptor for Northern Brewer. Uh, no esters, no off aromas. Very clean. Gave it 8 out of 12 overall for aroma. Uh, appearance uh, it was a giant head, uh, which uh, you can still see some of the lace. Well, you can't because I have my you know, I'm, my Zoom blurry in the background. And from a podcast standpoint, I can't hold my glass up to show you. Cooper's showing the lacing on his. You know, this was, I, I think out of all the beers, this had the biggest head, uh, the biggest lacing. Uh, and it, it doesn't have to have something that big, but I don't know. I always like to see something that you pour it. It's got a huge head that kind of grabs onto the glass. You know, to me, that just, it, it promises something in the flavor that's going to, going to come. So I like to see that, you know, medium amber color, crystal clear, three out of three, uh, flavor, uh, it's malt forward, low toasty. There's a woody hop flavor. Uh, present at the start, which I really liked. That you know, sometimes you, you uh, uh, sort of a malt oriented beer. This tends to be kind of a malt oriented beer with you know hops that pop up later on. This the the hops were present right in that first taste. It it, it didn't take time, and I, I really liked that. Uh, the uh, is medium bitterness uh, rises to to balance in mid palate, so I think there it. You know, this beer had great malt flavor, also had great hop flavor and great hop bitterness. Uh, it's well attenuated. It's balanced into a long finish. I give this 14 out of 20 for flavor. The the only thing, and this kind of goes, I won't belabor the point on the overall impression. I would have liked more, a little bit more malt character. You know, there's malt there, 
you know, I would have liked a little more caramel or a little more toast or both. This comes across very clean in malt, which is good. You know, I think Cooper was saying this could be like just more of an ale, uh, more in the standpoint from a fermentation character. You know, I kind of thought this maybe was almost in, in a spectrum between like an amber ale and a California common. This was maybe close to a boundary between those. Cooper's looking really confused, like what the hell is Char talking about? Um, you know, I, I thought it was maybe a little bit too, it didn't maybe have quite enough character from a malt standpoint. Uh, again, that's why I gave it 14 out of 20. That's still a good score. Uh, mouthfeel, 5 out of 5. Slight warming. Uh, medium body. Medium low carbonation. Uh, it's creamy. You know, no astringency. Uh, well done there. Uh, overall impression, 7 for a total of 37. Uh, I think this beer is really good. Uh, and it's pretty close to the old Anchor Steam in in hop character, I think. Uh, it you know, again. The malt is there. It's flavorful. It's no off flavors, but a little more maybe specialty malt on the toasty or caramel side would be welcome for me. Uh, you, but you you do, to the extent, you do have some caramel in here. It's, it's, it's present, just at a low level. It's there without oxidation, which is great because that's that caramel can oxidize really quick. You know, I used to live in down near Long Beach. It's a place in like 1990. I would go and always get anchor steam at the bar, hanging out at the bar. And I always kind of thought it was supposed to be this caramel, cardboard, honey flavor. And then I came to San Francisco and realized, wait a second, this beer doesn't travel very well. <laughs> that kind of heavy caramel. But you, you do manage to have a little bit of that caramel, a little bit more of that caramel malt with whatever you're doing to keep it from being oxidized would really, I think, move this even closer to the, the classic Anchor Steam. Uh, but again, overall 37, that's uh, it's very good. Thank you for sharing, and I look forward to hearing a little bit about this. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, JP, what do you think of it? Um, I, you know what? I I taste dryer sheet. Dryer sheet. Dryer sheet. It's very perfumey. There must be something in the can or something like that, but it's very artificially yeah. perfumey. I felt like more of a floral hop in it than than the some of the woody the quality but did you get did you get any of that I, maybe that's what i was picking up as an odd fruitiness i was kind of grasping too at what it might have been but, i was thinking that's maybe the finish of like a woody hop but now you're talking me into a floral uh -oh. character there's a very a very hint of it at the very finish mm. it does have an interesting edge in it and i was sometimes as a judge you're grasping for like what's the word for that that flavor and what is it what does it remind me of? Dryer sheet is an interesting one. I wouldn't it reminds go out me of dryer and lick, sheet, yeah. and I, lick I a dryer sheet. I think it's very bitter uh, also. But yeah, the dryer sheet, like it, it made me feel like there was, I mean, I don't know if there's a, a contamination, but like sometimes people have sent in beers that are in like packaging that kind of smells of a dryer sheet or something like that. So I thought, oh, maybe it's on the outside of the can, but no, it's like, it's like in the, like, like oh. a Kirkland dryer sheet or like a balance? I don't know. I don't, I don't really use them. So like one dryer sheet smells the same way. I mean, yeah, they're, I they're don't hard, know. They, they do smell different. Yeah. Uh, and they probably taste think, Robert, am I, what am I smelling? Did you uh, uh, run out of hot bags and use a couple dryer sheets tied together? Uh, only what tied is, you know. <laughs> I, I try to use the best stuff for you. I, you know? good, man. <laughs> I must be no. just a, a hop thing or just, well, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's a pure northern brewer. Like that's all it was. Yeah. I say very, very okay. traditional to it. Um, sixty minute edition, twenty minute edition, and flame out edition. So, and I went on the lower side of the IBUs. I know a lot of people typically be on the middle to the high, but I would say over the last couple of years, I've just noticed a trend of more and more people preferring less hoppier beers. So I've just been started, you know, changing up, changing up uh, the styles, you know, as I've been brewing and everything else so getting yeah, less sure. and less hoppier you know and less bitterness yeah yeah i, I don't know what to say it's weird it's, it's got to be me or there's something i don't know i mean I it could it could yeah. be maybe some still sanitizer was still in the can maybe that could have had something in into it on long term i'm not sure mm -hmm. on that aspect that's yeah. the only that's the only thing i could think of on on that one on the, as far as like the mm -hmm. packaging if there was I'm a sure. little bit of the sanitizer still in that can that i didn't get i don't know that. i mean i mean maybe it, i guess anything's possible um 
The yep. style can have some floral or perfumey hop character to it, as it can it can have resiny or or different different hop characters. But from Northern Brewer, it doesn't seem like you get a lot of that. No, I'm being poisoned, guys. <laughs> One beer at a time. Solve a riddle to <laughs> get the antidote, and he's gonna laugh. Mm. Um, all right, well, let's do. You want to do like a recipe real fast? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is just uh, Maris Otter, just 92% Maris Otter, Otter uh, about 7% Crystal Malt 60, and just a little bit of pra- uh, Black Prince Malt, just to kind of get the push the color to where I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. So we're talking like maybe 0.7%, like pretty much of the Black Prince. So nothing that I thought would push any sort of flavor boundaries or anything like that. Um, mashed in at a little bit higher, uh, 154. So I did 154 uh, for 60 minutes. And did normal mash out, normal boil. Um, yeah, um, the IBU was only uh, 35. So, like I said, so um, as far as fermentation, this was the California lager yeast. So it was White Labs 2112. So, um, but that was at a higher temperature. I did do it at 65 as opposed to like low 60s. I was trying to push like a little bit more of the of the fruitier aromas that that yeast can't express, especially at the mid temperatures. So I was definitely, I was definitely pushing for that into it. And then, yeah, just fermented it for about three weeks, cold crashed it. Uh, but it is high, higher on the carbonation than I normally do. I uh, did it at 2.9 volumes. So it's pretty it's impressive. Like, they kept that, that much in the can too. And, and it comes across like most people have the opposite problem, not enough carbonation. So yeah, I've um, learned with Ken, you got to go higher. You got to go yeah, like almost yeah. two point two volumes higher. Like wow, okay. But um, tap cooler has a um, counterflow pressure for a can, and it does work. So you're you are able to even do pressure pressure transfers even into a can. So I only do that for competitions or anything like that. So just to make sure that I get all the oxygen out of it. I've ruined plenty of hazies not doing that. Uh, well, no, we lost. Yeah. yeah. No, we noticed. Yeah. No, no oxidation whatsoever. That was good. Great. Sounds good. Uh, do you have any questions, Robert, for these guys? Uh, no, I mean, pretty much exactly what I, what I figured from, from the beer itself, honestly, you know, like, uh, no, no real surprises, maybe outside of the tide dryer sheets. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never got brand specific, so don't put words in it. No, I'm kidding. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's weird. I don't know who, who, who cares what I think, you know what I mean? Um, okay. Well, if that's it, we'll, uh, we'll get, let you go. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, gentlemen. My brother. See you, dude. Thank you. Thanks. And we've only taken one break, right, Brian? So far, just yes. one. Yeah. yeah. So let's take a second break yep. and we're going to come back. And who do we have on the line with us, Brian? Well, a whole slew of people, but I guess, uh, Nick well, up, and up next, up next, Nick and up. Alexis and Julian and, uh, Brian and maybe others. Cooper. Yes. Who's the next person on the group of three? Nick and company, let's just say. Okay, so Nick is coming on. And and Alexis and Julian and Brian. They all brewed it together. It's a We're going to take a break. We're going to come right back, and I'm going to put my head through the drywall, and I'm going to do this show just like this. All right. All right, everyone. Thanks for hanging on. We are on our last beer of the uh, California Common Marathon but not the last show, if that makes any sort of sense. On the line with us today, we have Nicholas, Alexis, and Julian, otherwise known as Zoom user. What's going on, fellas? Not that much. How's it, how's it going? How's, how's the two first beers been so far? Um, Shitty. I hope <sighs> it's better. No, man. Let's see. I mean, there was four of us that brewed it, so it should be better, right? Well, what here's the, the thing. Was, I dropped your team? beer. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. um, looks purposeful. Yeah, it was like, slammed it on the ground, and then the, it's a crime scene. It was that bad. Like, look at that. Yeah. Um, AP said, "No third beer on this show." Yeah. <laughs> no, no, the second show, yes, but just not on the first show. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was pulling them out, and I, I just, you know, hold them like you do with your fingers, like a normal human, like any sort of non-alien resident of Earth would. And um, it decided to, it would rather die than be drunk by me. So you, you um, need like a home beer delivery robot that just like has a little contained look, and, tray that rolls around your house. I'll buy anything, but this is the only beer I've ever broken. What do you think of that? Oh, I'm, I'm honored. Oh, Pretty good. You should be. So I'm just going to have a hop lark and be over. <laughs> um, okay. So what's the story? You guys all three brewed this beer at the same time or with, with each other, right? You went to someone's house and did it or whatever, right? 
Actually, four of us, but yes. There's four of you. Who's the fourth? Yeah. Um, can make it tonight. He's working. Um, yeah, sir. Not appearing Brian. in this picture. All right. He, and his name was Brian, so that'd be more That's more confusing. Funny. We'd have three Brians <laughs> on. Can't do that. He looks way too much like Scott Moskowitz, and I'm trying to not dislike him instantly. <laughs> <laughs> All I see is Scott. I'm going. Oh fuck, dude! I'm going to hang up and leave. Um, but that's not that's not true. Um, okay, well let's start the the start the thing then. All right, Char, why don't you uh, why don't you rip us off a, a nice line, crack us up a nice line of uh, questioning for these boys. All right. So it makes it sound like we're in a police procedural. Like maybe can you, uh, can you come up? Broken bottle. Like, can you turn uh, your volume Mr. up, Char? Petros, could you tell us? No, oh, did he just freeze? He froze. Look at this man. Oh. Look at this man with his childish Gross. internet. That's a childish internet. Well, it is 100 degree weather here. <laughs> that... I... I mean, they have internet. Okay, there we, there we go. Sure. Okay. There you are. Uh, there you are. Can just, you all of a sudden now can you turn your volume up, brother? Is unstable. Whoop, can you hear me? Can you turn your volume up? Okay, let's see what's going on here. Um, Something happened between. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening here. Hang on a second. Too many people in the okay, Zoom how, room. How about this? Yep, Probably. great. Is that, is that better? Love it. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, yes, thank you very much for, for sharing this beer, uh, Nick and, and friends. That's what I have on my score sheet, Nick Williams and friends, because that was on the labels. You know, it, it's funny. My daughter was here uh, last night, and I was judging some of these beers, and she's like, why, why are... Um, what, what do people have these Ziploc bags wrapped around their labels? And she wants condensation and ink and all that, but it's just kind of funny. Uh, so she had her tonsils out this morning. So uh, if you're listening, which you know, you're know you probably not because you're 16 and don't care, but <laughs> hope, hope you're feeling better. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a bottle so I could inspect the bottle. It was a bottle. There was a low hiss, which is always a good sign when you're uh, opening up the bottle for Dr. Homebrew to know there's some carbonation in there. Um, so thank you. Aroma, you know, got medium low toasty malt, uh, medium high woody northern brewer uh, hop aroma, which I'm, I'm making the assumption it's northern brewer. It does have a very distinct aroma and flavor, which really is, you know, you don't have to use that in California common. It always helps. Uh, no off aromas. Uh, I wrote this last night in opening the second bottle a little while ago, uh, and they did this will warm up for a while. As it warms, I get a little bit of fusel alcohol in the nose. Uh, and it may be that I'm, it may be woody hop, Northern Brewer hop, and I may just be mistaking that because sometimes Northern Brewer can come across that way. That's why I say, but it's, it's a hint of fusel. Seven out of 12 for aroma. Uh, appearance three out of three. It's crystal clear. Uh, man, I can actually see, uh, I'm, I know I'm blocking the camera for the three YouTube viewers who might have someday. Uh, I can see all of you in the Zoom screen right through this, uh, this nice. sample, which yeah, is... it looked really clear on. I could see the concrete of my floor through the beer. <laughs> I, I dropped, so that's pretty that's, impressive. Yeah, it's maybe like a half a millimeter, you know, a tenth of a millimeter or something. This is like a solid, you know, six, seven, eight millimeters of of beer. That's you know pretty crystal clear. So uh, pretty much a hazy IPA would be clear if you uh, cracked that in the floor of your garage and poured it all over. Uh, maybe try that with a hazy IPA next time, JP. But uh, oh, you it's know. You know, light, light uh, copper in color. Uh, there's a low persistent head with uh, tiny white and ivory bubbles. So three out of three for mouthfeel. Uh, flavor. Uh, initially, the flavor is balanced to malt. The impression that I have is that it's almost, it's almost roast malt, which. This is a beer where you can toasty is fine, caramel is fine. There's caramel. There's sort of a, a medium character quality to this malt as well, and I don't know if there maybe was some roast malt in this malt bill. We'll find out later, or if maybe the interplay of caramel and toasty kind of came across, maybe right on that border of roast malt to me, but it, it came across almost roasty. Uh, high woody hop flavor, which I like. Uh, at mid palate, there's a medium high bitterness that comes up to balance, well attenuated, uh, finish is long and balanced to malt. Uh, again, as it warms up, I get just a little bit of what may be fusel character in, in the finish. 
And it's it's difficult to tell, again, difficult to tell if that's kind of right on the edge of Northern Brewer or if it's actually fusel. So I, I didn't really, that didn't really affect my score. It's just more of an observation as it warmed up. 13 out of 20 for flavor. Uh, mouthfeel, five out of five. Medium body, medium low carbonation. Uh, no warming. I'd say it's more creamy than astringent, but it's not really uh, either one of those. But on that spectrum, it's closer to creamy. Uh, overall impression, seven for a total of 35. Uh, I like this beer. Thank you for sharing. Uh, you know, there's maybe a little fusel. I'll be curious what Cooper thinks about that. Uh, and about your ferment fermentation temperature. That could also be an issue that can come up. Even if it's not a high temperature excursion for some lager yeast, sometimes a, high a higher fermentation temp, which might even be like, you know, 80, which isn't going to necessarily give you fusels in an ale. That might give you a fusel character. I, I don't know. Uh, from a recipe standpoint, I'd maybe back off a little bit on the toasted malt. Because like I said, I, I get kind of a roast malt almost too far to that that end of the spectrum uh, from the malt. Uh, and you know the, the hop, you know, you've got just perfect amount of hops, I think, in uh, aroma, in flavor, in bitterness. Overall score again, 35. That's very good. Uh, I like it. I'm going to work on finishing my sample here while uh, Coop gives you his evaluation. So thank you very much. All right, Coop. All right. Cool. Take a break from your archaeological dig site. <laughs> and, uh, Minecraft yes. dig? And that would be nice. Yeah. Um, the uh, yeah, the beer had a nice, uh, nice hiss upon opening and appropriate fill and all of that. Um, yeah, this beer is very malty. Um, it's it's got a high, richly toasty malt up front um, with some biscuit and um, I don't know if I'd go as far as roast, but I can get kind of get what you're hinting at there. Is there something richer than just ro like, roast adjacent, maybe? If that makes any sense, right? Like very, very, very lightly uh, burnt toast, <laughs> but not burnt. Um, the beer has a, a medium high woody herbal and minty hop there, which I really like the hop character. A very clean, low temp ale, uh, ale slash lager character, you know, that hybrid thing. Uh, kind of nailed that. That's good. No DMS or diacetyl, no acetaldehyde. Um, all these beers so far is very, very, very clean. And I'm not getting any solvent or um, any rough, rough alcohol coming out of this myself i think it is just the woody hop uh light caramel only um and that's okay uh but with everything else that's going on here it's it's plenty complex supports the hops well the malt is is um kind of the the, the winner <laughs> yeah uh, and they can play towards that towards that side of things appearance wise um yeah it's perfectly clear i agree with that uh dark amber light copper color with burnished deep orangey colored highlights, uh, off-white eggshell colored head, a fine bubbles, sticks around pretty nicely. Uh, three out of three for appearance. Uh, I was at a nine for aroma. Um, Flavor-wise, the beer's bold overall. It's got a big, firm, toasty malt and balancing that woody, herbal, minty hop. I'm gonna pour a little bit more to get through this but it's it's yeah the malt wins for sure but um there's enough hop there too to um to play against it and keep it uh fairly nicely balanced um it finishes fairly dry but there is you know a hint of some malt sweetness in there it's not sweet per se but uh, but it does leave that that bold maltiness and the rustic hops lingering into the aftertaste for a long long finish um, just comes out immediately after it dries off your tongue and stays for a, a long while. The bitterness, I would say, is medium high, torts high, uh, with a bit edge of an edge to it. <laughs> it's a fairly bitter uh, uh, beer. Not getting any acetaldehyde uh, or butter or anything really nasty. No, no, no diacetyl, no sulfur. Um, again, a little bit of a, a biscuity edge. I could see a little bit of a toward toward the roasty rich side of things or a little chocolatey maybe but not not overt chocolate or coffee or anything like that uh, but yeah 
Um, boy, yeah, I'm debating on the hops versus the malt. They're they're probably fairly fairly even actually. <laughs> Instead of the malt winning, it's those hops really are prominent there too. Especially once the bitterness comes in, in the aroma, you might think, oh, okay, this is m- more malty. But then the bitterness element brings it up to to even. I think, and I, I'm I'm getting what I think is probably a bit of a mineral quality to this beer too. Um, I don't know how you treated your water, but there's something that's accenting that bitterness and making it just a little, little edgier, which is pre- preventing it from being maybe as smooth as it could be. Um, and again, in the mouthfeel has a bit of an edge to the beer. It's not astringency, but it could seem to play as such, uh, but it's just big overall uh, body wise. I'd say it's like medium towards medium full and uh, substantial, pretty filling, uh, it's not creamy. It's not warming at all. It's not an alcohol bigness. It's just uh, a, a, you know, a fairly full bodied for this style. Uh, yeah, this, wow, this is a very bold Cal Common. Um, a lot of great flavors in here. It really hits a great number of the expectations for the style. But I would definitely back off the bitterness a bit and let the, the hop and malt flavor shine. And maybe it would help smooth it out as well. Uh, possibly also backing off any mineral additions that might be accenting that that hop edge um but yeah it it doesn't need to be so attenuated dry to make its point a hint of sweetness would maybe be welcome in this beer too um but it's still a very steam-like and rustic the you know the the woody hop comes through nicely i really like that as such and um so yeah i I guess I had a 13.5 for flavor, three for mouthfeel, and seven for overall impression, bringing me to a 35.5 if my math is correct. So I'm real close to Brian on that one. Uh, but yeah, it's, five, you say. it's most, mostly just kind of balanced issues. Well, we got to make sure these average to something so somebody wins. We're going to. We're going to try to figure that out. That's but. right. Yeah, that sounds good. We're, we're, our math, math level is strong. We're famous for math skills. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. JP, how did, uh, what did it smell like when it was sitting on your floor? <laughs> it, a little oxidation. I got a little cardboard. Uh, I moved the paper bags and uh, sniffed the ground. It got some glass up my nose. Any rodent or insect coming off that? Or? No, no. no. Just okay. Straight no, no uh, mouse taint? baller, dude. Yeah. Mouse taint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, was, I was really disappointed, but, uh, you know, and like I, I, I felt it slip from my fingers and it dropped and I just, I closed my eyes and waited for the impact. Cause I'm like, I just can't do anything about it. It's just one of those live in the moment kind of things. And then it just goes, <laughs> like, <"Fuck!" laughs> and that was it. Oh. My foot was cool. So yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to say about it. I fucking 50 points, man. Loved it. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Schrodinger's beer. It's like, if did it taste bad? We don't know if you didn't taste it kind of thing. Must be, let's assume that it's good. Um, do you guys have questions for the Bryans or the Bryans about your beers? No, I mean, very, very thorough report. This is actually, other than the people within our own um, club, this is the first time we've actually had our beer judged before so it's okay. cool it's a cool situation to actually have you know jumping onto a podcast and have somebody judge it for the first time on the podcast and so this is a great opportunity for us yeah um yes it is i agree i'm kidding um well I, look i appreciate you guys sending in the beers you know the show wouldn't happen if you guys weren't willing to, to do that so i think that's that's cool for you or uh, um was it a northern we, brewer in the, in the spear i would ask is it uh yeah um, so we did we did majority northern brewer and i actually swapped out um, for the the fifteen minute um, before flame out, the adding a an HBC four seven two, which um, it is more of a it's a similar alongside the Northern Brewer, um, but it has it has that woody herbal feeling, but also adds a little bit of citrus to it, which I thought was just you know since everybody's already uh, we were just everybody was going to be doing. Um, a the, the same style beer with our club and so we just wanted to to try something new try something different and i think it i think it works relatively well well i mean nice and bold and, and yeah. fresh fresh tasting so yeah. yeah it has that rustic quality i'm not getting a big citrus um 
And then mineral wise, did you guys adjust your water or um, what did you do with the? No, nothing, nothing. Uh, I mean, it's just, just regular filtered, um, filtered okay. water that we use typically. I mean, nothing, nothing minerally that changed, but you know, it could just be the, the water down here in Southern California. When, where did it start and finish out at? Um, yeah, so we've, we started, Alexis, do you have that information by any chance? I got it. I got starting gravity at 1.055 and then we ended it at 1.014. Yeah. Yeah, we fermented, I think it was around 62, 63. So it was sitting in that. We used um we used this experiment not experimental, but relatively new um yeast called Charlie's Fist Bump. Um mm. just looked in just looked into it, just wanted to try it. I mean, it was we, we were looking for um looking for yeast that that match up with California lager um or San Francisco log style lager um yeast. And so this one's something that kind of matched up that can do both ale and lager. Um and so we wanted to just try it out, see how it worked. I mean, yeah. like I said, we wanted to wanted to mix it up compared to, you know, chain, you know, have the the steam beer that 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 recipe that's been that's been here for generations and kind of just, you know, make a little tweaks to it. Um, I've never heard of that one. Yeah. That's a cool, yeah. cool, saw cool thing that, to try. I was at more beer the other day and I saw it and I thought it was like a misprint or something. I was like, <laughs> the damn name. yeah. When I walked in, I was like, yo, who's, who's fist bumping Charlie? What's going on here? Who's this, who's this Charlie guy? They were, they were questioning me. I know. I, I kind of, I kind of was just thinking that as, as you're talking, I'm going like, yeah, like with the new sort of generation of homebrewers, like who gives a shit who Charlie Papazian is? Like who yeah. can- <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Don't get me wrong. Like he's a nice guy, and we did yeah. see a lot for yeah. homebrewing. But like, it's just weird to market to market a product with this man's name on it who hasn't been like around in like five years or whatever. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Ten, years, ten years, years ago was the sweet spot for selling that stuff. But yeah, yeah I think ten, clearly it wasn't useful sure. because that's if it's a White Labs yeast and it's Charlie's yeast. I took a quick look at the web page. It's it's not that yeast is not going to throw fusel, especially at the temperature you fermented mm-hmm. in, like the the low sixties. So clearly, what I was thinking, and again, it didn't affect my score because it's something that came up later on when it warmed up, and I couldn't. It, it was right on that edge of that woodiness, and clearly, it's it's the northern brewer, and not any fermentation characteristics or fermentation byproducts from your, your ferment. So that That's was good. also it was yeah. a it's a bold move and a, a cool choice to not use the standard, you know, cal common yeast. But definitely a yeah, quirky and fun beer and, and yeah. starting out on the high end of gravity for the style at 1055, it's, it's bold and it's big and it's, 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 you know, robust. It's really a, a fun beer. And so far, all of these beers have been, at least to me in the, you know, very good or higher territory. Yeah. So we're yeah. not, not picking out any real serious major flaws in any of these. So you guys are all doing yeah. well down there and, and you got a great club. So and I think a ten, and I also want to put a ten fourteen finish, maybe is why we're getting like a bigger flavor. Yeah, I like thought it would more, be drier. Yeah, yeah, it, it is contributing to hold up to all those flavors that are there. It seems like yeah. so. Oh yeah, cool. Well, if that's it, I think we're done. Any questions on the other side? Any comments? Any um, kissing you want to do? Anything? No, yeah. I mean, unless the the other people that you know didn't really talk at all this whole time want to say something, you know, you guys. Zoom know user, want to steal your spotlight, man. Zoom user number one, Alexis. Wow. <laughs> Nobody. All right. Fuck them. No questions. Okay. Thank you for the feedback, though. Yeah, Thanks I really for sure. It. In, uh, guys. in yeah, all sincerity, uh, sending in the beer. That's uh, that's very cool. I'm glad you got yeah. out of it. And um, you know, if you want to send anything else. Please feel free of Brian's email. If you guys uh, listening live or listening at all want to send in beer and be like these brave souls, you can email Brian at the brewing and uh, he'll get you on the docket and we will get you beers in and I will try not to drop them. I'll probably carry one at a time now in my, in my advanced age. Um, I apparently can't function properly anymore. So um, Sully will come over and change me. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, everybody, if you are listening live, stay tuned. We have a fresh batch of home brewers to come on and talk more California common, which, uh, is cool. This is a, a unique thing. We've never done anything like this before either. So, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So hang on everybody. And if you're not, uh, just skip to the next show or go listen to something else on the network or whatever. Uh, but definitely email Brian at the brewing network.com. And, uh, he likes feet pics. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Guys, uh, Only feed.com. We'll see you. Hell yeah, brother. All right. <laughs> All right. That's uh, the show. Thanks, done. guys. Uh, appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Again. Appreciate it. Good job.